Is Hong Kong the ideal test bed for China's plans to make the digital yuan global? Welcome to The Daily Forecast, February 17, 2022. I'm Angie Lau, Editor-in-Chief of Forecast, covering all things blockchain. Well, Hong Kong has long been known as an international financial hub, and now it's set to pilot retail cross-border use of the ECNY. We're going to take a look at why experts believe the city is an app choice for testing international payments using the digital currency, plus a whole lot more coming up. Let's get you up to speed from Asia to the world. Join thousands of NFT traders who already start their day on Crypto Slam. Let's kick off with some of the biggest stories coming out of Asia today. First up, more crypto and sports bedfellows to tell you about. Singapore-based exchange Bybit is sponsoring Oracle Red Bull's Formula One racing team. Oracle Red Bull claims it is the largest annual crypto sports sponsorship to date. While the scale of the deal has not been officially disclosed, an unnamed source has been cited in media saying the sponsorship is worth 150 million US dollars over three years. Bybit is going to work on growing fan engagement by issuing fan tokens. According to data from CryptoSlam, that could be a good choice as all-time sales volume for the fan token market as a whole is approaching 50 billion US dollars. Meanwhile, two unicorn sightings in South Korea to tell you about. Two South Korean crypto exchanges have achieved the billion-dollar valuation status. According to the Ministry of SMEs and Startups, Upbit and Bitthumb were among the seven Korean companies that achieved that status in 2021. Now, crypto is hugely popular in the country, with a survey last November finding that 40% of South Koreans in their 20s and 30s have already invested in digital assets. And while a planned tax on income from digital assets is now delayed to next year, crypto-related campaign policies are expected to play a key role in convincing younger voters to take part in next month's South Korean presidential election. You can find those stories and more at forecast.news. Now, over in Hong Kong, the city is set to become a testing ground for Chinese authorities to pilot cross-border payments using the digital yuan. And experts say the international city is an ideal choice. But why? Forecast News' Timmy Shen reports. Hong Kong's position as a bridge to the world is well established with a city already a primary offshore yuan trading center. According to the de facto central bank, the Hong Kong Monetary Authority, over 70% of offshore yuan settlements are made in a city. And given its economic and political nuances, one expert told Forecast Hong Kong is the obvious choice to pilot cross-border payments with the digital yuan. Hong Kong's role in this is that of being a perfect uh, uh, laboratory experiment because it is both part of China uh, and it is at the same time a part of China with a separate currency. So you can control and not control. You can see what happens. But nothing is going to happen which in Hong Kong which would destabilize um, China uh, about ECNY. Deployment of the ECNY will not only improve payment efficiency and reduce costs, it would also allow Beijing to monitor and manage capital outflows more easily. For China, doesn't want to do is to see large capital outflows destabilizing the renminbi whether it's the ecny or the cny they don't want currency volatility initially limited to the greater bay area encompassing hong kong macau and guangdong province roach says the trial is a precursor to wider implementation of the digital yuan this will then open the way to using it in a broader international context so Middle East, African, Asian currencies, any currency, basically. For Forecast, I'm Timmy Shan. For the past three decades, if you were at the Olympics, you only had two choices if you wanted to buy a t-shirt, a souvenir, you either had to pay by cash or a visa card. And then the 2022 Winter Olympics began and China changed things up 
and introduced the ECNY as a third alternative. Now, with the games nearing a close, how successful was the move introducing the ECNY to the world? And a lot to talk about this week. In the hot seat, Michael Wu, CEO and founder of Amber Group, is here to talk about all the latest developments in the new economy. Great to see you again, Michael. Thank you, Angie. Great to see you. All right. Okay. So we got. Have you been watching the Olympics, Michael? Uh, not too much. Uh, I, I've been following <laughs> on social media, but it's been too busy. <gasps> I think that's been the case for the Olympics, but it has been a very interesting Olympics so far beyond sports. A lot of netizens have been keeping a close watch, not only on the games, but actually the push for ECNY. What, what's the read as you see it so far? Uh, I think uh, digital payments uh, is definitely the, 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 the trend globally. Uh, there are different forms of it. Um, I think, you know, um, uh, crypto, as we know it, is a major form that's up and coming. Uh, the, the other types of digital currencies, such as CBDCs like ECNY, is also you know, being rolled out. Um, I think you know, it's a great thing. Um, it definitely brings a lot of convenience for the end consumer. Uh, different types of digital currency will have you know, different features. Some are more decentralized uh, versus the others. But all in all, you know, I think that's just the inevitable trend as everything moves to the digital world or digital era. Well, you know who else is jumping on that bandwagon? And I never thought that this was going to happen. The Oracle of Omaha, Warren Buffett himself, uh, making a second investment into new bank. This is, of course, in, uh, uh, you know, one of those crypto friendly uh, uh, banks, uh, challenger banks that are in this space. And he's he's dumping uh, Visa and MasterCard and he's going into the challenger bank business. Now, it's it's a very crypto friendly bank. How do you read this move, uh, you know, increasing his investment stake in potentially a crypto friendly bank? I think a lot of the trends are just inevitable, inevitable such as uh, fintech, you know, overtaking traditional finance and uh, new kinds of neo banking or uh, uh, you know uh, digital uh, financial services uh, sort of uh, uh, being proven more superior, more effective than legacy banking. Uh, in the case of this investment, um, I think it's a good investment. A new bank is also you know, one of the largest uh, new banks in Latin America, which is a uh, very important and booming economy uh, that you know, we are also looking very closely at. It has a huge, uh, hugely uh, digital native young population. Uh, a lot of them you know, don't actually have legacy banking account, but they have you know, internet access. Uh, so instead of you know, having their first bank account, now they have their new bank account. Well, you know what, to your point, it is the new economy driven by the new generation. And, and you know, they're looking at all of these um, onboarding vehicles that allow them for wealth generation. And of course, the grandfather of them all. Let's talk about finally the latest on Bitcoin. Hash rate had a huge jump to a new all time high this week, even as Uber CEO said they would accept Bitcoin as payment when it becomes environmentally friendly. So there's that's a really interesting move in the right direction. But what is the energy consumption uh, barrier and issue? Could that still be an obstacle to the use case adoption? Carbon neutrality, um, the sustainability uh, is a very, very important topic that I think you know the whole world cares a lot about. And uh, Bitcoin's proof of work uh, model, where you know essentially you convert energy consumption into that value storage to back uh, uh, the value behind Bitcoin uh, alongside its scarcity and everything. I think it's a very universal model where you know uh, money comes from uh, a storage of energy value, right? Which uh, which, uh, which if you think about it, is quite fair and uh, uh, probably you know, more robust than any fiat-based uh, system. On the other hand, you know, I do think we need to pay attention to, to you know, the, 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 the sustainability investing side of things, platforms such as wealthy, where you know we're going to roll out green bitcoins, green yields, where you know uh, the investors can not only invest 
uh, in Bitcoin and other digital assets, they can naturally easily offset their capital impact with a single click. And it really incorporates that kind of social aspect that a lot of increasingly this generation and the rest uh, when it comes to investing cares about in the new economy. Michael, always good to talk to you. And that's the daily forecast from our vantage point right here in Asia. Hit like, hit subscribe, hit that alert button. We appreciate it always. For more, visit forecast.news. I'm editor-in-chief Angie Lau. Until the next time.